Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshee. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living. Uh, This is episode 228. My name is Danny Forshee, and I am delighted to have you join in with us today. Uh, Here at DFEA, our mission is to share messages of hope from the Word of God. And I want to welcome again my wife, Ashley Forshee. Welcome, dear, to the podcast. Thank you, dear. I'm very glad to be here. (laughs) Today's going to be fun. We get to talk more about parenting. Yeah. Last week, we gave our... Well, we tried to do the top 10. I think we did two, right? But <laughs> we didn't get very far, did we? We didn't make it far, but the top two. But today we're going to look at the top 10 parental um, encouragements, advice that Ashley and I could could share with you. Uh, again, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're in a series um, called uh, Family Goals, and uh, we're going to do about eight um, episodes in this series. And our whole purpose is really just to reach out to married uh, married folks and uh, those who are parents, maybe even grandparents, and uh, you know, just to encourage you in your family and our some of our single adult friends who tune in. God's blessings on you. So glad to have you as well. And so we are, um, you know, we're excited about this. Ashley and I have been mm-hmm. married almost thirty five years. We'll be August second of this year. Uh, we've been raising children now for 30, <laughs> say 30 right. years. Our kids are grown. Yeah, you know, our kids that's right. Are, they're having kids, but one of the things we'll talk about later is there will always be you know, right. our kids. And so as long as we're alive here on this earth, we'll be their parents and yeah. we'll be there to, uh, you know, our roles change. Things look differently. It's interesting how, you know, we, we raise our kids, they become adults, and they are like our some of our closest friends. Yes. Isn't that cool? It is. I mean, just like last night, we went over and saw Hannah and Jeffrey and baby Claire and baby Riley. Layton and Danielle came over. That's right. We had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. We're really blessed of God. Okay, so here we go. We'll pick on up with uh, principle number three. And this one for the parents is, remember uh, that your kids are watching (laughs) Mm. your every move. So give them a great example uh, Mm. to follow. And, and we know that. We know especially those little toddlers, like a little Claire the other night, Ashley. She was just bowing her head. She was closing uh, her eyes, praying because she saw her dad. And see her dad and mom praying so much. So they absolutely. do watch us, don't they? Absolutely. <laughs> that was such a sweet thing. I know we were talking about that. And just, yeah, you know, like you said, they are. They're always watching. And mm-hmm. uh, Claire is starting to talk. And just to yeah. give that as an example, and just a little further on the rest mm-hmm. of that story, is so she saw Jeffrey on... Um, our our prayer night on mm. Tuesday night, and she looked at Hannah and she goes, "I want to pray." That's true. She and did. then she like so Hannah was like, "Okay, sure, sure." And then <laughs> I mean, out of a two year old, barely two year old, she mm. goes, "Thank you for my mama and my daddy." Uh, Amen. That's sweet. I mean, it's just that's just priceless. It and is. where did she learn that? That's good. She learned that from her parents. Yep. And so in seeing that and being instilled in them to start, start at a young age of, yeah. of praying, she yeah. may not, you know, she didn't completely understand, but my goodness, for just to be already a part of who I she know. is. It's, it's so powerful. It's just sweet. So we were sweet. all crying once we heard, you know, <laughs> Hannah shared that. I was like, oh my goodness, that's so precious. It is. So they're, they're always watching. They are. They're watching. So uh, mm. I read these lyrics to a song today and uh. I've heard this song on the radio, and it's a little older, but it's called Watching You Mm -hmm. uh, by Rodney Atkins. And so I just want to read some of the lyrics if I can get through them. Uh, Some of it's kind of funny, yeah, but some of it's really, really sweet and serious. But he really makes the point. He says, green traffic light turned straight to red. I hit my brakes, and I mumbled under my breath. His fries, little boy in the back seat, four years of age. His fries went flying and his orange drink covered his lap. Well, then, my four-year-old said a four-letter word that started with S, and I was concerned. Mm. So I said, son, now, now where did you learn to talk like that? He said, Mm. Mm. said, I've been watching you, Dad. Mm. Ain't that cool? I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you and eat all my food (laughs) and grow tall as you are. We got our cowboy boots and camo pants. Yay, we're just alike. Hey, Ain't we, Dad? I want to do everything (laughs) you do. Mm. So I've been watching you. Then the second stanza says, We got back home, and I went to the barn. I bowed my head, Mm. and I prayed real hard. 
said, Lord, please help me, help my stupid self. Mm -hmm. Then this side of bedtime, then, yeah, this side of bedtime later that night, uh, turning on my son's Scooby-Doo nightlight, he crawled out of bed, he got down on his knees, he closed his little <laughs> eyes, he folded his little hands, and spoke to God like he was talking to a friend. Mm. And I said, son, now, where did you learn to pray like that? He said, I've been watching you, Dad. Mm. Ain't that cool? <laughs> I know, it's sweet. <laughs> mm. Excuse me. I'm your little buckaroo. I want to be like you. I, I eat all my food mm. and grow as tall as you are. Uh, we like fixing things, holding Mama's hand, yay. Uh, yeah, I'm just we're just alike, uh, aren't we, Dad? Mm. I want to do everything you do. So I've been watching you with tears in my eyes. I wrapped him in a hug, said my little bear is growing up. And he said, but when I'm big, I'll still know uh, what to do. Uh, mm. Isn't that sweet? Yes. I uh, know. I <laughs> start crying even just from... <laughs> they can cry, but it's true. Kids are... They are. They're watching us. And so parents, mm. knowing that, let's give them... Uh, a great example uh, to follow. Of course, one of our introductory mm -hmm. comments was nobody's perfect. There are no perfect exactly. parents except the Heavenly Father. We make mistakes. And when you do, I would encourage you to tell your your mom, your uh, child, your daughter, your son, hey, I could have handled that better. I should have said that differently. Please forgive me. And there's power Absolutely. In that. All right. Mm -hmm. Whew, maybe the next one won't be as emotional. <laughs> Go one-on-one -on -one with mm -hmm. your child. That's mm -hmm. principle number four. And what I mean by go one on one is um, do something um, with that your son or with your daughter that they enjoy doing. And I had a friend of mine, really a mentor, told me this. He said, "Now it's not something that you enjoy doing, and you want to bring them along. No, it's something specific that each individual child would like to do. For example, for us, for Hannah, when she was young, I'd take her to the mall, and we would go shopping for." something yeah. related to girls. And so yeah. I'm just going along and encouraging. And we go get coffee for the boys. That was a little bit easier. You know, yeah. being a guy, we would go to the store, get some kind of, you know, some toy, some gun, you know, something just to just to be together. Doesn't have to be something huge. It's more the fact that you're spending time with them uh, in their in their world. Um so you know, just do something that your kids enjoy doing. Yeah, I think that's so important and uh, to spend that time. And I just know that's, uh, it was fun. I just saw, I guess, even on Facebook the last couple of days, I know some of our, uh, I saw it was like a father-daughter uh, dance that, you know, that's some cool. of our people at our church went to. And I just thought, that is so sweet. Yes. It's just awesome. There's nothing like spending that one-on-one -on -one time with yeah. your kids. Yeah. And well, so. And not just with the family. No, you right. Know. But one on one, one on one. Was, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay, I did, however, take uh, them in my world one time, <laughs> and that's a good thing too. It you is. Know? It is. Well, more than one time. Yes, we would do stuff exactly. together. But this one time was kind of funny. I was yeah. a professor of evangelism at Southeastern Seminary, and I went and played this course, Arnold Palmer's course. That's where he played when he was a student at the University of Wake Forest. Yeah. And when the campus was there uh, in Wake Forest, today it's in Winston-Salem. But anyhow, we were at this golf course, and I took all three kids. They were young. They were like mm. eight, nine, six, seven, four, five, some, yeah. maybe a little younger. younger. Yeah. Maybe a little bit younger. It's good to have mom here to keep <laughs> uh, me straight. Especially in Wake Forest. They were young. Oh, they were yeah. young. So, I think Hannah was six at the so oldest. Hannah's sitting here. Bryant's uh, beside her. Yeah. There's no room for Layton, so he's sitting on the floor. The floorboard. I can't believe you're even sharing cart. this. Know, you know, this is a... <laughs> so we're driving, you know, and I hit this golf shot. And I said, come on, kids, get in, get in. And we're driving. All of a sudden, I felt this boom. I was like, wow, that was mm. wild. I don't know what I ran over, but I kept looking for my ball mm. until I heard Leighton screaming I'd run over him. He had oh, fallen gosh. out of the golf cart, and we'd run over him. And he was back there just hollering and flailing. And <laughs> he said, we were talking about today. He talked yeah. about he remembers this. He remembers <laughs> his sister laughing. <laughs> Gosh, that's awful. I know. Of course, it's a good thing I didn't know all that went on, I think, until a lot later. And so, <laughs> so I thought I'd share that with you. Parent, no perfect parents, right? Exactly. Mm. I, um, you know, I've noticed, though, that parents who spend a lot of time mm. with their kids when they're young, those same kids, it seems mm. that they enjoy spending time with their parents yeah. when they're older. So, just something to, to think about. Yeah, that's, that's sweet. All right, number five. We're just cruising along yeah. here. All right, so parent each child differently mm. is the principle. 
Because why? Each child is absolutely different, have their own DNA and fingerprint, their own makeup, the way God has created them. Now, they look like, they look alike, mm-hmm. right? Siblings look like moms and dads, but boy, are they different. Each yeah. child has its own unique characteristics and attributes, strengths, weaknesses. Um, so, what may work for one child as you raise that child may not work exactly for, for the next child. Yeah. Um, so I just thought, you know, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, in light of just parenting each child differently, I know, I think one of the ones you had talked about before is almost even with the first, second, third child, you know, birth order, because that also can somewhat affect, you know, uh, a child's personality. And so I think with, um, one child can be more dominant and so may require more attention. True. So that's just kind of just the way it is. I would just encourage you, you know, this is something that we look back on and I think about sometimes that middle child is more compliant and yeah. just doesn't really say as much. So I'd encourage you, make sure you, you know, spend time with that one. And even though they may not require as much, they still need you. And, uh, and, we, and we know that. But I think sometimes when, you know, there's so much going on. And I know in our three, we're close together. Yeah. And so, but I can just see where sometimes the one that's just a little bit more quiet, a yeah. little more compliant or whatever yeah. can kind uh, of— like just because he's kind of quiet doesn't, yeah. mean, doesn't really need you and you're one-on-one. Absolutely. Attention. That would be Brian. Yes, that would one. be Brian. So for those of you yeah. that may not know Ashley and me, or maybe your first time mm-hmm. uh, tuning in, we, we have three yeah. kids. That, uh, they were born in 1990, mm-hmm. 92, and 94. Uh, yeah. I was pastor in a church in um, Keller, Mount Gilead mm-hmm. Baptist Church, and I just started the Ph.D. program at the seminary, Southwestern Seminary, in 1990, 91, and our children were born in 90, mm-hmm. 92, 94. It was wild. Yeah. Remember those days? It was it was pretty it was intense. It was, <laughs> you know, and and I even want to go back to a little bit. Okay. I know you're, to, but I mean, it just oh, made me good. think. This I just thought this was really important with each child. Like I said, of being a little bit different. Mm-hmm. One thing I think about, even with that child that is a little more compliant and maybe that's a little more quiet. I think one of the things I had to figure out, and we figured out, is like with um, that personality, you have maybe sometimes even the way you talk to them, and yet you you can't necessarily just ask yes and no questions that's because that's all you're going to get yeah. a lot of times is a yes and no answer. Yeah. So they have to be more, <laughs> they have to be questions that have more than just that. And yeah, so that's I think that's true. just a, something to think about. And even, you know, as an adult, you know, just as that personality. So whereas yeah. our other child, you can ask him a question and he'll talk for 30 minutes and so which is great you know so you don't have to worry and then Hannah she's kind of somewhere in between and in, so in between. yeah and so but I mean it's like with you know with that personality just had to like you have to bring them out of it a little bit more and so um make sure you ask those questions you know because cool. they have a lot to say that's so, true that's anyway <laughs> I hope our kids are okay with us talking about oh I think we're yeah, talking yeah. about y'all a lot. we, love, we y'all. love y'all y'all are awesome mm. all right number six discipline you know we need to talk about discipline it's mm. very important and I would just say discipline your children and be consistent mm. uh, I think discipline is very much needed the Bible talks about raising up our our children and the nurture and admonition teaching of the Lord um, Proverbs talks a lot mm. about uh, you know you uh, it's important to uh, to, to discipline firmly and fairly, um, yeah. your child in particular, and society at large uh, suffers when you do not discipline your mm. kids. Think about that for just a moment. If you don't discipline them and, and be consistent, uh, then it's it's actually harming the mm. child, and then you're unleashing these unruly wild children on society, and so society and your children will appreciate it mm. uh, when you discipline. Now, what about spanking? What about yeah. Uh, for, in my family, it wasn't so much spanking, it was whippings, you know, mm-hmm. and so we, there, there's a balance there. We spanked as parents. Ashley, um, had, <laughs> you had something that worked pretty good. What was it? Well, we had, uh, it actually is just one of those uh, little spank spoons is what we called it, but I mean, it was like really what you used to bake with, and so uh, anyway, we would use that, And uh, but they knew, you know, there are consequences for your actions, and um, you know, always try to make sure you don't do it when you're angry as a parent. Yeah. Be very careful, and uh, you know, another thing I would just say with discipline is and some kids, you know, the spanking just didn't 
you know, it, it just didn't matter as much. They would rather just do what they were supposed or wanted to do mm-hmm. rather than price. and pay the price. <laughs> so um, it was funny, and I'll, I'm sure he really wouldn't mind us sharing this, but it, we had one child that said to us, uh, oh, I know we would just say, you know, if you've done something wrong, you need to say you're sorry. Mm-hmm. And so I would tell him, I said, you need to say you're sorry. Well, this was, I guess, this is our youngest, and I guess he was about four or five at this point. And he comes back and he says, well, Mom, I can say I'm sorry, but I really don't mean it right now. So do you really want me to say it? <laughs> okay, so this is a five-year-old, four or five-year-old. And I'm like, okay, what do you do with that? So my thought was eventually, it was like, we would say, okay, well, you need to go to your room and you need to sit in there and think about it. And when you're ready and yeah. you feel like that you really yeah. are sorry, That's you go— but I, yeah. and Oz, but what was funny about him is he's very social. Yeah. So putting him by himself in his room, he was like, eh, I don't want to be there really long. So mm. he would come back and, you know, That's it's right. just you just got to figure out what works for each child because each child. they are so yeah. different and so unique and such an incredible creation of the Lord. Amen. And, and so and each child, like I said, is different. And mm. there are different ways to, yes. to do discipline. She right. mentioned the spank spoon, go to your room. Taking uh, yeah. timeouts, doing uh, taking away these cherished uh, you know privileges, you know, I didn't. We didn't spank our kids a whole oh, lot, no. but I do remember one time that oh, my bo- our boys got a pretty good spanking from mm. me. Do you remember we lived in Yorktown, Virginia? Oh goodness, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, it's funny, but it's not. So Brian and Leighton had a little buddy over, and they were young. They're probably yeah, they probably ooh, were more like seven, eight, nine. Yeah, probably. Okay, yeah. And so we were having a disciple now. We had 18 high school teenagers coming over to spend the night in our home, upstairs, downstairs. We, we were getting ready. No, we had the girls. The girls. <laughs> and one of the toilets would not flush. And I was like, oh, no, this is terrible. And so I asked Bryant and Layton, I was like, this toilet up here, it, it, did, do y'all know? What? No, sir, Dad, no, no, I don't have no idea what, what's happened here. And I was like, okay, well, called the plumber. The plumber comes out, runs that snake down through the toilet, and and he starts pulling out these toys. <laughs> these toys on steroids. These toys are like this big, big old Hulk toys. And and the first one we pulled out, he handed it to me, and I looked over at Brian. <laughs> he just put his head down. He's like busted. And I and I gave him a good spanking, but I told him why. I said, guys, yeah. it's it's that you lied. Mm. You know that you lied to me, and so. Mm. Their little buddy, he took off running. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, I'm not any part of this. He went to his house. And so, anyhow, yeah. try to be consistent, exactly. lovingly disciplined. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, number seven of 10, our top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, number seven, kids spell L O V E this way T I M E. Yeah. So, what we're saying is uh, love your kids by spending time with them. Mm-hmm. Wow. Isn't that important? And isn't that hard? It's hard, I think, in every generation, but. Especially with, you know, parents are busy. A lot of yeah. parents both work full time yeah. jobs, and and so uh, spending time, you just have to show up. I I know growing up as a kid in Alabama, I would play football and basketball, and mm. and then when our kids, um, especially our boys, started getting older, I was like, oh man, they're taller than me, bigger than me. They're gonna be great mm. football players. And both of them were like, Nah, Dad, we don't want to play football. We want to play tennis. I was like, What tennis? What? What in the world? You know, I just had never, hardly ever played, didn't know much about it. And so, hey, that's what they wanted to do. That's what Hannah wanted to do. Yeah. All three of them were very good high school tennis players. Mm-hmm. And so I can't tell you how many tennis matches that Ashley and I have attended, both in high school and then when the boys played in college. Yeah. We traveled all over the state of Texas, and we would watch them because we would enter into their world. And it that's was right. just important for us uh, you know, uh, to be there. And it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, as I look back on that now, now I enjoy playing tennis. Mm. It's like they taught me, Ashley literally taught me how to play the game. But it's whatever your kids enjoy yeah. doing, just spending time with them, showing up. Anything about that you want to say? No, I just think, like you said, it is just so important to be a part of, be a part of their world. Mm-hmm. Be, be present. Yeah. I think that's just, uh, and that's what, you know, we tried to do. Like I said, not perfect, and you know, but we really did yeah. try as much as we could. And I think when you look back at it, you know, and you hear people always say at the end of your life, Ooh. you know, yeah. you're going to be, wow, I wish I would have spent more time in the office, oh. or I wish I would have spent more time 
with myself <laughs> or doing yeah. what I wanted to do. When you have your your family and all of that, and you think, man, it's just so important yeah. to um, to invest in your. I mean, these are your children. These are the yeah. children that God has placed in yeah. your home. This is your um, responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. And um, so, anyway. So I think it's important. Spend time with them. Mm. You know, whatever it is. Um, we, we're talking about sporting events. Yeah. It could be whatever their, oh, their hobby is. But also, um, a parent shared with me just how important it was for their family to be uh, to have dinner together. Oh, yes. You know, just kind of mm. carve out that time where there's just, you slow down, you put, so I've heard some people taking their cell phones yeah. and everybody puts them on the middle of the table. And they yeah. don't look at them, and they just spend that quality time with each other. Yeah. That quality time is born out of quantity time, though, as mm-hmm. you just make the time, spend it with your kids. Y'all know this. We're just encouraging yeah. you and reiterating what you already know to be true. All right, number eight, make birthdays and holidays mm-hmm. like Christmas a big deal because they are a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, I, you know, raising, uh, raising in, in my family, being raised, I, you know, Birthdays were okay, you know, have a cake, sing happy birthday, may get a present, that's cool. Christmas, get a few presents, that's great. But Asher's family's a little bit different. I mean, this is a big deal. You're talking Christmas. <laughs> and so when we got married, that was kind of a moment for me. I was like, okay, we're coming from two different uh, spectrums here and, and there. And so I, I, I kind of gravitated over to Ashley's viewpoint on this to make it more of a big deal with presents and time and that sort of thing. Um, so this past Christmas, we we did something a little bit different. Christmas still is a big deal to us. Yeah. And birthdays. Yeah, that's uh, true. But Christmas especially. Yeah. And all of our kids, like, and they're married. Now they're having kids. And we met um, all together at Lake House. And we were having a, a great time opening presents. And then Ashley had this really cool idea. Why don't you tell our listeners <laughs> what you came up with, what we did for our kids? Well, you know, it's funny, and it's kind of cool. Just it's just traditions that have been passed down, you know, and it, and it really came from my own family, you know, and what my mother and father did for us as far as just what Christmas was. And we would, of course, like I said, we would do the other part about sharing nativity, and we did it. So, it's, of course, that's always the most important part. But it's also just about having fun and blessing your family yeah. and blessing your kids. I'm thankful we could do that. Yeah. But we actually, um, this past year, just— um, we actually sold our home. The Lord had blessed us a little extra this this year, and so we the kids had no idea, and we just surprised them with a uh, a game. And so Danny and I both uh, we got uh, dressed up as Pat and Vanna, and so we did the Wheel, <laughs> Wheel of Fortune, Fortune. Mm. Wheel of Fortune, and um, had some you know um, puzzles for them to figure out and. Yeah. Of course, I probably would have gotten fired because I kept giving away the answers, and so I, it wasn't a great man. But we laughed. The kids laughed. We had the even when Danny and I first walked out, we had the Wheel of Fortune music playing. She had a wig. <laughs> I had a wig on. He had a wig. Had a wig. I had a, like Pat Sajak's hair and Ashley's <laughs> comes out. I tell you, our kids, they were stunned. They were like. <laughs> And the, their first reaction was this. They looked at us and they got their phones and went mm. like that and started filming it. And, and it, we just yeah. laugh. We look back on that and yeah. just say, just creating those memories, you know, those times. Exactly. It just was yeah. fun. So I encourage you, have fun. Yeah. That's what, you know, with, like you said, I, I wouldn't pass up that, you know, opportunity mm-hmm. just to spend time with your family and make memories. Yeah. You know? That's right. And I mean, I'm thankful we could, you know, bless them a little extra, but whether we were able to do that or not, we just got uh, each year now just trying to be a little more creative and have fun. Now you you know? got something coming up next year, right? We already, I'm already got it thinking. I'm yeah, already got yeah, it going. Yeah. So, uh, kids, y'all don't know. I don't even think I know. <laughs> well, I think I told you a She may have bit. told me I might have forgot, but it, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so we'll have a good time. All right. Number nine, mm-hmm. top 10 mm-hmm. parental mm-hmm. tips, principles, things that we've done that mm-hmm. seem to work well. Number nine, no matter their age, your kids are. Mm. Uh, still your kids, and they need your love and support. You yep. know, the stages of life, they move really quickly. You know, when you look back on your life and you you feel like they're going to be toddlers forever, they'll be terrible twos forever, but they're not. No. Um, teenagers, whoo, mm. got any parents of teenagers listening? Mm. Those can be some tumultuous times. There's yeah. times of rebellion and parents aren't cool and they're cool. Mm. And, and it, it could just create some fireworks. And you think, man, well, they... Will they be teenagers forever? No, they're actually teenagers from 13 to 19. Mm. Um, and it make you want to pull your hair out, just make you want to, but it really make you get on your knees and pray a lot. Exactly. But every 
phase of life, mm. they they need you. Can I say that again? Yeah. Every phase of life, preschool, adolescents, mm. teenagers, college students, young adults, adults, whatever stage they're in, they still need you. They love you. They value your input. Um, and if you treat them with love and respect, uh, your relationship will, will deepen and blossom. And I know, Ashley, that's something you've mm. said before. And I heard you say this to people that your kids always need you. I think so. You know, I know I've, I've heard it always be said, and, and I, I get it, that the child develops. I mean, there's, the early stage of life is so very important yeah. to parents to be around from zero to four. And it, you know, is a very important part. But I think what I found is that, um, yes, it is. But like you said, it never really stops at each stage of their life. Sure. And even though they may say they don't want to be a part, or, you know, they may act as if it's um, not as important. Mm -hmm. But I think what I've found is that when we are a part of their lives, not to be the hover parent, not to be the yeah. helicopter parent, yeah. but is to be a part, to be yeah. there, to be yeah. also to be there even for your, especially, oh gosh, I just think about teenage years and just, mm -hmm. you know, the different things that go on with that and just encourage you with that. Keep praying, keep encouraging yeah. your kids to love, love Jesus and to yeah. like um, pointing that, that way, providing opportunities to do things that are um, Christian based and yeah. just give them different opportunities. And so mm -hmm. I will just share one little fun thing. And it's just like, you never know how your kids are watching. And like I said, and um, I remember when the kids, this is a, this is a just gotten into the youth group. And, um, you know, as a parent, that was kind of for me, I would kind of go along where the kids were, you know, yeah. try not to hover, but still be a part. So I ended up being a chaperone on one of the mission trips. And they're like, oh gosh, you know, mom's always, you know, there. And I said, like, yeah. I said, but I'm going to leave y'all alone. Y'all do your own thing. I'm going to go and be a part of, you know, and just help. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny because at the beginning of the week, you know, of course the kids, they did they were doing their own thing, but a lot of their friends would come around. Yeah. And then they would come and they would ask questions and then they would come and sit down with us and hang yeah. out with us. And then all of a sudden, we started seeing our kids come around and we're like, you know, these parents, they aren't so bad after all, you know. <laughs> and our kids have always been, you know, overall, we've had a, a, just a really good relationship with our kids. I'm very thankful for that because we've always tried to be very open with yeah. conversations and stuff. But I encourage you as parents, you don't have to hover over them, but you can be a part yeah, of their life sure. and encourage their friends. Provide your home as a safe place for your kids to come. Yeah. Provide you and your spouse to be, you know what? This one thing I just remember, is, and I think about this, is like even with the teenagers, like if I needed to be an excuse for my kids mm -hmm. to not go and do something that they knew they weren't supposed to do. I said, absolutely. You yeah. use me as an excuse. I will always be there for you yeah. in that yeah. and to provide that for them. So, yeah. and then with, uh, anyway, it's just like, just keep encouraging them, loving them, and just being there for them. Yeah. And so I think it's such just a big part, At important to do. stage, age, phase absolutely. of life. All right, our final one, at mm. 10, then we'll wrap it up for today is, just give yourself some grace. Um, parenting mm. is really hard work. There are no mm. manuals <laughs> when you're born. You don't leave the hospital with mm. a manual, the, the 10 steps on how to raise this little baby, this infant. Yeah. Uh, but you have biblical principles, right? You have the Word of God. You have the church. You have family. You have friends that you can lean on. So I would just say give yourself a little bit of grace and patience. Uh, one thing I would recommend for parents is uh, please take time for you and your spouse. Yeah. Uh, that's so important, especially with children in your home that they're so dependent upon you for everything, children of preschoolers and so forth. So uh, get a trusted babysitter, go to dinner. Of course, when you're at dinner, you're going to talk about your yeah. kids a lot, but that, that's yeah. okay. I know when Ashley was a stay-at-home mom, uh, I would... Um, Occasionally, I would just keep the kids and say, why don't you just go out? And and she would. She would just go to the mall. She just went to shop. She may buy <laughs> a little something. She'd get her Diet Coke. She would exactly. just chill out. Now, here's what would happen. She would come back refreshed. Absolutely. And I would be exhausted. <laughs> I would be going, oh, my word, you do this all the time. And so it gave me a, you know, a deeper appreciation for uh, for what she uh, goes through. And I see Hannah today. Aww. You know, Hannah, she's yeah. right there with it. You know, Jeffrey's working full time and he's gone outside the home and there Hannah is. Yeah. What a big job. So give y'all 
yourself some grace and patience. Lean on each other. Lean on your family. Lean on the church. And yeah. those those are my top ten. Mm, our that's top. That's a 10. good one. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It is. And you know, this is on a little. I know we're wrapping it up here, but I think also I'd encourage you give your kids some grace, grace yeah. because your uh, kids. You know, you think about you were a teenager. You were the things that you go through. We're not perfect. Your kids are not going to be perfect. And so, therefore, they're going to make mistakes, sure. and you got to be, let's help them through those mistakes. Yeah. Let's help them and, and encourage them through them. Yeah. And so, you still you still have consequences for your actions, yeah. but you love them through it. Yeah. And so, anyway. You did a great job, dear. You were oh. a great parent. You still oh, are. Our kids oh, just absolutely uh, love you. So, mm. thanks for listening today. Uh, we're going to wrap up this episode and pick up next time with some more what we hope are some mm. helpful principles or tips for parenting. And actually, next episode, next week, hope you tune in because I've asked some people that I believe are experts at mm. parenting, and I gleaned from them. And so for the next episode, we're just going to share with you what mm. other people have done and what they found to be very helpful as they parent uh, their children. So I want to uh, help you with something, uh, reawaken your mm. awe of God's grand story. Mm. I'd love to send you my seven-message series called Preaching the Paintings. Each message pairs a famous painting with a well-known scene in the Bible uh, to help you embrace the beauty of God's Word and the story uh, that He's telling today. So you can find out how to get your copy at dfva.com. Thanks again uh, for listening to today's episode of Revangelical. I just want to reach out. Hold your hand, (laughs) pray for our listeners. Thank you, Jesus, for our time together. Bless them, oh God. Bless these parents especially. And grandparents, great-grandparents, bless Mm -hmm. them, each one. And God, we just pray that you would take what we have shared and just and what works for them, Lord, Mm -hmm. just apply it to their lives. And that Ashley and I could just be uh, just a little part of them, Lord, a little part of their success in parenting their children. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week.